A special thanks to OC for providing the Megamon 15 for review. Video production monitors are a vital piece of equipment for commercial work and film productions. Being able to provide the director, crew, and most importantly, your client, with a large, bright, and accurate image to reference on set is something that most production companies do not take lightly. We've already looked at the OC 21.5-inch field monitor on our channel and really like what it had to offer. You can find a link to that video down below, by the way. But we acknowledge that there are times when a smaller 15-inch monitor may be more manageable and convenient. Playing right into this mantra, the Megamon 15 comes with its own sturdy and well-made carry bag. This is a genius move by OC, in my opinion, and it makes this monitor ready to grab and go right out of the box. You can leave it inside the bag at all times and mount the monitor and bag directly to a stand or place it on a table. The mounting pinhole and the bag can sometimes take a few attempts to line up with the stand that you're putting it on. Hello, sorry to cut in like this. I was just filming some B-roll and I noticed that there's another little quirk. You can actually hit the bottom of the V-lock plate with the pin from stand, which uh, I just thought was nice to note. But it's still great to see that they thought about putting a pass-through hole on the bottom like they have here. What's more is that the front of the bag opens up to create a sun hood. Now, I do agree that it may not always be the most aesthetic look, but it is handy for travel and shooting outdoors. The screen is advertised at around 1000 nits, which is bright, but the sun hood does come in clutch for brighter days outside. If you prefer the clean look of it without the bag, it's really easy to remove it, and it can be used by itself and placed back in the bag when it's time to pack up pretty quickly. One downside to removing the monitor is that the monitor does not fit in the bag with the two feet attached. The feet not being easily attachable and detachable is a downer, but I will say that the mounting peg at the back keeps the monitor standing upright on tables. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing this often, but I do do it occasionally. And personally, if it's just me doing a quick color grading session, this is how I do choose to use it, at my own risk, mind you. Once the monitor is out of the bag, it's quite rugged with a sturdy folding top handle, and it's mostly made of metal, except for the front, which is a good feeling plastic. For I.O., it has two SDI in ports, one loop through SDI out, a video in, one 3.5mm audio in, and one HDMI in. Like the larger monitor, this one also does not seem to cross-convert HDMI to SDI, but I wasn't expecting it at this price point. I'm also happy to note that this model comes with a cheese plate included for mounting wireless video transmitters and can come with V-Lock or gold mount battery plates. This monitor ran for almost a whole eight-hour day with a wireless video transmitter running off of just one 190 98 watt V-Lock battery at lower but still visually pleasant and punchy brightness settings. I felt that this was a great performance and meant that we didn't even think about plugging it in while shooting indoors and it really added to the convenience of being able to just pick it up and put it where it needed to be. If the director moved, so did the monitor. I will just add however to be wary of the monitor's built-in battery indicator. It stayed at a full three bars for us even once the V-Lock's own indicators were just one bar out of five remaining. As a side note, I'd love to see a monitor with more than one DTAP output on the battery plate so that you can power the monitor and a wireless video transmitter from just one battery without having to rerun cables every time you change the battery. All of that does combine to make this monitor an easy accessory to justify bringing along even on smaller shoots with fewer crew members where I found myself not really wanting to bring a bigger monitor, only to regret it later when the client has to look over my shoulder the whole day at a tiny camera monitor. When a field monitor comes out on set, it looks slick and professional. People are happy and oftentimes impressed on smaller productions, and I don't know about you, but I like happy clients. As for the screen itself, color, contrast, saturation, and brightness all look good out of the box. And while I didn't feel the immediate need to change them, they can be customized to your required gamma, levels range, and color space. OC do also sell a calibration cable for this monitor if you want peace of mind that the screen is as accurate as it can be, but I was unfortunately not able to secure a cable for this review. The accessories are also quite expensive. To get a screen protector and a cable for this with shipping costs almost as much as the monitor itself. The monitor does have an amazing amount of assist tools for this price point, and a surprising amount of customization for the tools that it does feature. Some of my favorites include customizable audio metering, zebras, waveforms, false color with several manufacturer log profiles to choose from, as well as the standard Rec. 709, and heaps of built-in LUTs for most popular cameras. It's also got focus peaking, custom frame guides, and a custom anamorphic D-squeeze with a zoom option for 2x lenses when shooting on 16 by 9 sensor cameras. I do wish that the D-squeeze and zoom was available for other squeeze ratios as well, but seeing that the feature was here was nice to see regardless. 
One downside to having all of these tools and features is that the menus can be a little bit clunky to navigate and the face buttons aren't always the most tactile. There's not a lot of travel on the keys and the clicks are not always distinct leading to some mispresses. One last thing that I noticed that was a bit odd was that in some select situations, the monitor does exhibit some screen tearing or glitching when supplied with less common aspect ratios and frame rates. I noticed this while using it as a PC monitor for a coloring session at my local cinema. The monitor defaulted to a 1920 by 1200 at 59 hertz with incorrect scaling and occasional glitches. To resolve the issue, I set a customer resolution in the NVIDIA control panel and that seemed to fix it. I admit that this isn't a particularly common use case for monitors like this, and it certainly doesn't render the monitor unusable, but I mention it because it's a bit odd, and if you notice something like this, you may be able to try changing the resolution or frame rate to resolve signal issues. So in summary, much like its larger sibling, this monitor is a great value and does more right than wrong. The colors are pleasing out of the box, and it offers good versatility at a more manageable size with a good mix of features and tools. I also think that this package is Debatably more complete for the price, having the cheese plate and case come included. Being able to bring a laptop sized carry bag with me to shoots containing a whole field production monitor and wireless receiver already attached to the compartment at the back that just pops right onto a stand with or without its case is delightful. And it takes a lot of pressure off of setting up a larger and less ready to shoot solution. I'm keen to hear your thoughts. Do you agree about the convenience factors or would you prefer a larger 21.5 inch monitor yourself? Let us know down below. Taylor and I do read every comment. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.